not going to get that championship back by shaking hands, being best friends with the champion. No, I slapped him right in the stupid face. I slid out of the ring and I let him know my intentions from that point. Uh, he calls me down to the, the ringside and we're, we're starting to chat. He's just saying how I'm doing all that. I'm just, and then at the very end, he's like, hey, you got a match. I was like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, you're going to have a match. I was like, that's not normal. Like, why, why? And he's like, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, you'll be fine you're, you're gonna do good you're gonna wrestle alistair black it's gonna be it's gonna be great i was like all right cool yeah and now your hosts of the card subject to change podcast for frequency sake tag team champions of the world the wizard cz and never wrong nick Bull. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, and colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. I am joined by my co-host, my coach champ, co-tag champ of the podcasting network, the Wizard CZ. Wiz, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Nick. How about yourself? Hey, not too bad. Before we welcome our guests, I just want to give a quick shout out to Absolute Pro Wrestling out of Waterloo, put on a show in water. Well, they're not out of Waterloo. They were in Waterloo last night, put on a show in Waterloo and CZ and I took a two hour drive up and, uh, and took in the show and, and, and want to thank them for putting on a classic show, a great show. And, uh, also thank them for the interactions afterward. We had a good time up there. Didn't we CZ? Absolutely. And I love, uh, I love a good battle Royal. That was the main event. That was a lot of fun to watch. It absolutely was some twists and turns. They booked it pretty Pretty good. A lot of people left uh, upset, but that's that's pro wrestling. Uh, <laughs> fans leaving either happy or upset, and they were definitely they were definitely uh, up in arms last night. But good job. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Jason Prentice and uh, Brandon the Shank Eubanks for uh, being uh, welcoming us with open arms up there at the Cedar Valley Sports Complex in downtown Waterloo. Beautiful complex. You ever get a chance to see a show in that building? Go for it. Great venue for wrestling, but. Uh, that's enough about yesterday, a fun-filled day of wrestling for sure for the Card Subject to Change crew. We're talking about right now. We're going to get ripped, not that way. No, nope, no, nope. <laughs> no alcohol involved here. We're not going to get ripped that way. We're going to get ripped in a better way. We've got the one and the only Ripped Studwell joining us here on the Card Subject to Change podcast. Ripped, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. This is going to be a very fun time. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we've been looking forward to this one, too. Uh, due to circumstances we'll probably touch on later, we had you booked a long time ago, and things mm -hmm. just didn't work out. But now we got you back on the show and got you right where we want you to fire away some questions at Mr. Rip Studwell. And Rip, I'm going to start off the show like I do every other show. Spoiler alert, if you watch this show, we started off the same way every time. I'm going to ask you, Rip, what is it about pro wrestling that got you hooked? Uh, what... What keeps you coming back? What about pro wrestling is it you love so much? Uh, it's definitely the storytelling. Um, I'm a huge fan of stories and just interesting characters and stuff like that. And uh, especially back when I first started, uh, which was WrestleMania X7 was the first one that I had ever seen, um, which is a great one to start out with because it's the consensus. It's a, a lot of people's consensus favorite amazing. WrestleMania. It's amazing. Time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like when you start out the show with, William Regal uh, drinking the tea that Chris Jericho pissed in. Um, that is a great way <laughs> to start your wrestling journey. Um, and I uh, just, I was hooked from there. I, I don't, I love the match that they did too. It was great. It was not a long match. It was like five minutes, but there was just so much good stuff on that. Shane McMahon versus Vince McMahon was fantastic. Um, Rock and Steve, or yeah, Rock and Steve Austin, excuse me. That was phenomenal too. Uh, oh yeah, the TLC. I can't forget about that one. It was just, there's so many different flavors and I just, that's what makes it so great, right? Like there's so much, the TLC is just this high flying extreme extravaganza. Um, then you have the comedy of Chris Jericho and Regal and this huge story of the main events. Um, it's just, it's so good. I, I love the stories of it. And that's what keeps me coming back. Cause I mean, I love reading. I love anything that has a good story and a good heartbeat. It's just, it's, it's so fun. That's what keeps me coming back for sure. So and safe to spoiler say, alert. Oh, go ahead. Uh, spoiler alert. We're doing a lot of WrestleMania prep. We've got a lot of buildup for the big event. 
WrestleMania X7 may or may not be on our list of eight the eight best WrestleManias. I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to confirm whether it is or not. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Ripped. I want to know uh, who you gravitated towards when you first started watching wrestling. Who are who are some of your favorites? Uh, Rey Mysterio was 100% my favorite growing up. Um, he was just, you know, I've always been the small guy too. I never. <laughs> I never achieved great heights in that way. I'm just five foot six, you know, and just uh, watching Rey Mysterio be able to do it, you know, it's just, it's inspiring uh, as a kid. And that's why, you know, I feel like when you get older, you start to shy away from those more superhero type characters, but they're a hundred percent important in that way because Rey Mysterio was the first one that I gravitate towards. He was just awesome. You know, he came out, shooting out from the entrance ramp and the fireworks going off. And of course he couldn't do that later in his career. Uh, but yeah, he was definitely the first one. I just love watching him at any time him and Eddie were in the ring together. I mean, that was just otherworldly watching those two wrestle. So I would say he was the first one for sure that comes to mind. But then as I got older, uh, Chris Jericho edge CM Punk much later, I very much enjoyed these guys because they were very, very good villains and very realistic characters that I enjoyed. So yeah, there's a ton of wrestlers I, I love, but for starting out, those would be the ones for sure that come to mind. Ripped. I like how you mentioned that Ray Mysterio is a superhero. I, met, I believe in his hall of fame speech, he thanked everybody for allowing him to be a superhero. Oh, yeah. And we, you know, Chris Jericho is a name that gets thrown around a guy who has transformed himself over time, but look at Ray Mysterio and his career arc, a guy mm -hmm. who's small, mm -hmm. who did all the Lucha stuff early because he yeah. was young and not as injured. Yeah, that guy is really has transformed himself multiple times again and again over his career. And uh, looking back on last year's WrestleMania, I loved the match with Dominic, loved oh, that yeah. whole story, all the moving parts of that match mm -hmm. and the story leading up. I thought they did a great job. You, you want did. to talk about I enjoy I, I enjoy a good storyline, too. And I thought that mm -hmm. was an excellent story, storyline, oh, yeah. story arc last year. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My light went out. Give me a second. No, no problem, man. No problem. We're being jo we're joined by Rip Studwell here on the Card Subject to Change podcast, powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, and colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. Talking storyline arcs and how Rey Mysterio and Dom really put the icing on the cake at last year's Mania. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's just. I mean, he was the original high flyer. I think a lot of people say that in wrestling. Like he was, he invented it and just put it on the map. And I mean, just. You go back and watch his early stuff when his knees were not completely shot, essentially. Right. Dude, he was just ridiculous. And there's one spot uh, in the Ray versus Kurt Angle match at SummerSlam 02, which is one of the best matches of all time. It's the best opening match of all time, uh, if I had to put my name in that ringer there. Um, but that spot where the like <laughs> he's about to jump out of the ring, but the ref comes over and he's like, no, don't. And then Ray goes back and then he goes to Kurt Angle. He's like through the middle rope and then he just flies over. Oh my God, it just looks so crisp. He's so good. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, Ripped, you you mentioned Ray and Eddie when they're in the ring together. I got to give a shout out to Halloween Havoc 97, one of my yeah. all time favorite matches, no matter mm -hmm. who it is. Ray and Eddie just knocked it out of the park way mm -hmm. back then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. <laughs> I know it's not everybody's favorite. But I still think my favorite, now that we're talking about Dominic, is the one at SummerSlam between Ray and Eddie for the custody of Dominic. I just, that story was enrapturing to me when I was a kid. I just loved it. I hated Eddie. Like, he did such a good job. Yeah. Normally, I could see, like, the in-between of it where it was like, oh, this guy's doing a good job. Like, I could always see that. Like, the villain's really good at what he was doing. But, like, man, I just hated him. He did such a good job. Like, he was even better than most heels. And the payoff was so good. <laughs> and just now to see Dominic doing what he's doing, too, it's just really cool because it's like, in a way, it's like you grew up with Dominic Mysterio. Now he's on your TV, and it's it's just so cool. I love it. For sure, yeah, for the, sure. Eddie did such a great job as the villain in that role. And then you think of the chubby cheek Dominic, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wondering, who his, wondering who his daddy really was. And then you yeah. see him now just out there doing his own thing, shedding his own skin so and just being his own character. Dude, he is, mm -hmm. he is so much fun to watch. I love oh, yeah. watching Dominic. Yeah, fantastic. So, Ripped, what was the – if you could look back, what was the crystallizing moment in your in your life that said – may or may – do you say I want to do this myself? What brought you into becoming a wrestler yourself? Here, it was a CM Punk shoot promo uh, leading up to Money in the Bank uh, 2011. I want to say. Yep, you're right. Um, yeah, it was. 
I don't know, just something clicked that day. I was like, this is the best thing I, I was dealing with, you know, my stepdad dealing with cancer and stuff like that at that time. And just to have that out and just to be able to not have to, I guess, dwell on that was just very cool. It was the first thing that made me feel anything when that was happening. Like I was very, I was in a tough spot at that point. I mean, I was, you know, 15, 14, 16, something like that when this was happening. So I was still a kid and I just didn't have any like outlet. I didn't know how to, to talk about this horrible thing happening to my stepdad and just to be able to completely be lost in something like that. Cause I'd fallen out of wrestling for a little bit. And around this time was when I came back, it was during like the shield stuff and Daniel Bryan and the yes movement and stuff like that. And CM Punk shoot promo. I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Just something clicked that day when I was watching it for sure. Talk about how wrestling you, you shared there a little bit, but just how great wrestling is as an escape. Mm -hmm. Um, I always call wrestling the great uniter because it brings in so many different walks of people of life. You go to a wrestling show and you're going to see a whole cornucopia of different, yep. you know, different people, ages, races, pay, pay grades, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. It's yep. the great uniter, but it's also, mm -hmm. it's also a, a great place to lose yourself and find something to follow and, and, and tune in and appointment viewing and look forward to that. You touched on that a little bit, but just talk about that a little bit more about how, how important that was to you. Uh, not just dealing with that, but like throughout your whole life. Oh, it was everything. Honestly, it was everything because I don't, it sounds dramatic, but like, I don't know if I'd even be here right now if it wasn't for stuff like wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. it's very hard to envision my life without wrestling making its mark because I've, you know, I've been open about, it. I've dealt with mental health stuff for a long period of my life and, you know, it still crops up every once in a while, but Man, when I was, especially when my stepdad passed away from cancer, uh, it was like the only thing that made me feel anything and like just made me feel anything other than just being sad and depressed. And like, I just didn't understand the world. And it's just, it was great. And that's, that's always been my goal personally with wrestling. If I've been able to do that for anybody, just one person, I feel like I've done my job because that's, that's what wrestling has meant to me. It's been, it's been a very important aspect to my life. And like I, my life would be fundamentally different if I did not watch the VHS of WrestleMania X seven, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> now it's you know, come full circle. Now you are part of that environment mm -hmm. where you are a wrestler. People come chant for you uh, sure. lately with the whole James Thomas thing, which we'll get mm -hmm. into later. But now you go from being a fan. You're still a fan by the way, but now you're part of it what's yeah. it like being on the other side of it and seeing all those other people out there that are coming there to be entertained coming there for an escape and knowing that you help fill that void for some people it's hard to put into words i think but it's very strange to say the least that like people as you said are coming and like chanting my name and you know <laughs> just being overall into what i do you know like that's always been something that's hard for me to like do what I is what I give to the world valuable in any way that's hard to quantify but it's just you know it's really cool like it is it's very cool to say the least um and it's just it's again it's just one of those random things where it's like my whole persona idea came from a sitcom I watched and I'm like just because I watched a sitcom episode it's like now I'm at this moment in time where people are chanting <laughs> my name and it's just like it's flattering and then for a guy like me it's also quite strange because you know a lot of my life has been telling myself you know i don't matter or stuff like that and it's just well apparently i do you know what i mean so sure yeah it's uh it's it's cool it's very flattering and nick nick was reading my mind that was exactly what i was going to ask what <laughs> what's it like for you standing in the ring and hearing all these people just chanting ripped 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 uh, that's got to uh, elicit some huge emotions for you talk about that a little bit uh, yeah it's it's hard to put into words um it's really cool you know because I, I feel like a lot of people you know you just want to leave the world better than you found it you want to be a you want to make your mark somehow and be remembered in some way and it's like it's 
it's really cool to, you know, have people chant my name and to be remembered in some way, even though it's, you know, some really, really goofy concept in a really goofy world. You know, it's just, it's, it's very cool. And like now on the other side of the problems that I was having, I can definitely appreciate a lot more. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's just really cool. I, it, it's hard to put into words. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. Well, Rip, take us back to the origins of how you came up with your character. You said you were watching a sitcom. Give us that yeah. origin story uh, on how the, the the birth of Rip Studwell uh, happened. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Workaholics. I, I, I've, I've never seen it, but I remember it being on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there's an episode in the first season um, that the one character, Adam DeMamp, basically, he's a, he's a small guy. He's not like... He's not out of shape, you know, but he's a smaller guy. And he basically has this idea because he's dating someone new and the girlfriend tells him he should be a bodybuilder. And like, I remember watching it, the scene with all these just jacked, crazy looking bodybuilders. And that Adam character is just standing there looking small as he normally is with these other characters. And I'm like, you know what? That's really funny. You know, I should do that because I don't have a problem making a joke about myself. Like, it's okay. You know, I grew up, I've had this discussion recently where it's like, I've grew up with three brothers, right? Three mm -hmm. older brothers. Mm -hmm. I had to get a thick skin pretty early if I was going to survive that. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, I understand how to, you know, take the piss out of myself. Like, it's not, it's not a big deal to me at all. So, um, yeah, I was just like, I'll just go with it. You know, I can't avoid how I look, you know, um, I've never been one, you know, my dad, he was in good shape, but like, he wasn't ever like jacked or anything like that. So I'm never going to look like the, uh, the rock or anything like that. So it's like, why not just lean into it? Why not have some fun with it? And yeah. And then here we are. So it worked out. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I absolutely love, I, I, when we were prepping for the show about a week ago, I asked you to send me a couple of, a uh, couple of pictures. And the one that I picked, I just love you're standing there. You got the weights. You just, yeah. <laughs> just look like you're pumped up to, I, I love that image that you present and yeah. that story just brings it all together perfectly. Um, Rip, talk about a little bit. So how do you prep during a week where you're going to be in the ring? And then how do you prep yourself the day of? How do you get into Rip Studwell as you're preparing for a match or a segment or a show just overall? Yeah, so unfortunately, I think this answer is going to be disappointing. It's not like a very uh, a long scale thing for me. I just I don't know what it is. I've always been able to like click it off and on for some reason. Like I don't have to get into any specific zone or anything like that. Like I just I do it. You know, I've always been really good at separating that because that's that's a that's an important part for me. It's like while I do like performing and while I do like entertaining people, it's not my life at the end of the day. Um, I go home, you know, I, I work a job just like anybody else. So to be able to, you know, just go out there and do it and have some fun and then, you know, shut it off is pretty cool for me. So I wouldn't say I had like a routine to get into character or anything. I'm not like a method actor like Jared Leto or something like that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. I flip it on and off. Like it's not, unfortunately that that's the, the only answer I can give you. <laughs> No, I, you, you said something earlier in a previous uh, answer to a question, Rip, that I really like. You said, you know, you're able to laugh at yourself. How yeah. much of that is what makes people successful in pro wrestling? I mean, let's face it, you know, pro wrestling kind of gets uh, kind of gets laughed at by people that are outside mm -hmm. of it, that people that don't get, you know, get the big yeah, picture. Yeah. But you're able to sit there and laugh at yourself about it. How big of a deal is that you know, for you and other people? that you and other wrestlers, other performers that are wrestling to be able to, to step back and just laugh at themselves a little bit and realize what the big picture is. Yeah. I think it's good if you have that characteristic because I've seen a lot of guys that, you know, can't laugh at themselves or are pretty selfish. And that's, that's one of the great things about SCW that I think everybody realizes, you know, they're, you know, they're a part of this part of the show or like part of the machine or whatever in a certain way. And I think it is, I think it is very important to be able to do it because you, you can look at a lot of the, you know, um, best wrestlers of all time. And like, I think all of them have been able to do that. You know, Kurt Angle's a big one. I mean, he came out in a milk truck for, for God's sake, you know, like, um, 
He wore a he-, he wore a headgear with a wig. Yeah, right? yeah. Wow. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like the Big tiny Show. cowboy hat. The- <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and then like Big Show was able to laugh at himself. He had he had an amazing career. He's still having an amazing career, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm pretty sure he's still wrestling in AEW. I could be wrong. I haven't really kept up with AEW, but um, Edge had fun. You know that whole angle with Kurt Angle was great. You know, so yeah, I think I think it is very important. You know, because. Uh, the Miz is another great one too. I love bringing him up because he doesn't get enough credit for what he does. He is in- insanely funny, and he doesn't take himself seriously. And you know, he's been their best heel for like two decades now. So, yeah. yeah, I think I think it's a very important trait to have, and I think a lot of the best wrestlers have done it. So, I think the proof is there. <laughs> Ripped, our friend Brandon the Shank Eubanks says, Rip needs to make a stop in all, absolute pro wrestling. So you're yeah. definitely you're definitely wanted an APW, and I, I guarantee right. that crowd would eat you up. They would love, <laughs> they would love ripped Studwell. That and sounds that's in great. a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to, I'll definitely have to make a stop there sometime for sure. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Ripped, let me uh let me Nick. I just lost my train of thought again. Every show for the last couple of weeks, I've derailed. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go back. Rip, we, <laughs> we had you booked. We had you booked prior mm-hmm. uh, a few months back, and you had taken some time away from wrestling. Talk about how um, wrestling affected you during that time, and what made you br- brought you back to wrestling. What was the turning point to bring you back into the forefront and and, and into this uh, this current feud with uh, primetime James Thomas? Yeah. So, um, I think it was, yeah, it was last April. Um, I had a after match thing with, uh, uh, Mason Beck and I just, I landed wrong on his one move and I just had a really bad concussion and I took a month off after that. Like I didn't wrestle at all, but that wasn't enough time. It just wasn't looking back on it because at the time I thought it was anxiety and I think it was still both, right? Like it was both of those things combining because you get a head injury and you're dealing with mental health, you know, that's going to compound things, but sure. Um, yeah, I don't think the concussion was properly healed. Like I got back into the ring about a little over a month later, I did an outdoor show in bluegrass and I just, I didn't, I didn't want to be there. I didn't, I didn't like wrestling at that time. And that had been going on for a little while. It was, I didn't understand my own relationship with wrestling um, because I still was kind of in the mindset of like, oh, I could still make this a career, I could still do that. And, you know, I, you know, I've definitely gotten into a different spot with it where it's like, it's not my career. It's not what makes me uh, who I am. And I think that was the other thing too. I was having a pretty strong, like identity crisis at that time. I was, uh, I feel like my whole life as dramatic as this sounds kind of came to a head at that moment. Uh, those last several months in wrestling. And then in September, when I had my last show and anniversary, um, yeah, I just I just needed to get away. And I needed to find out what made me enjoy wrestling again. Like right now, when we were talking about what I loved about wrestling, I would have not had the same response if we sure. had had the interview a long time ago because I would have been definitely more hateful about wrestling because there were just so many aspects of it that I just was not enjoying. Um I know this contradicts what I said earlier, but, you know, having a sense of humor about myself, I feel like that was all like people in life saw about me. You know, I just felt like I was just constantly being like a comedy guy, not only in the ring, but like in real life too. Like I didn't feel like people understood that I was more than just a person to make you laugh, you know? Um, And that was really hard for me to deal with because it's like, is that, really my only value to the world. I don't think it is at the end of the day, but yeah, it was just, it was a lot of things came together and I was just I was so unhappy. And I think looking back on the concussion had a huge part in that too, because there was a time late mid December where it just kind of lifted like that entire haze of the concussion. Um, and I felt a lot better. And that's actually funnily enough, uh, Merrick Brave, the one who promotes and runs SCW, a uh, great guy. He actually like, I kid you not, like a week after that happened, he reached out to me and he was like, Hey, I just want to see how you're feeling. And if you were thinking about coming back and I was like, you know, that's perfect timing because I was thinking about coming back at that point because I was starting to get back into what I enjoyed about wrestling, what I liked about it. 
Uh, I would watch wrestling willingly because I just wasn't watching wrestling unless it was just on in the room I walked in. So, yeah, I was starting to find the love of it again. And I just, you know, I missed it at the end of the day. I missed being in front of a crowd. I do enjoy performing, which, is, again, is one of those things that, like, being a shy kid, I'm still pretty shy, but, like, much more shy growing up, say that I really enjoy performing is kind of crazy. I never thought I would see that day, but I really do love performing. There's a certain aspect of it, you know, to be able to plan something and then go out and do that thing and then get the reaction you want. Um, it's, it's very rewarding. So it's definitely something I missed and it was a, a hole in my life. So, yeah. So it sounds like everything just came together at the right time for your return. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you were, you were willing and able to open up about that because I know a lot of people, myself included, do struggle with things like anxiety and maybe not a concussion for someone who's not an athlete, but struggle with, with a lot mm -hmm. of mental aspects. And I, I, Really am really am glad you touched on that because I think hearing your story could help other people who are watching the podcast. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love that we're we're able to share stuff like that. It it yeah. kind of makes me think of uh, Dustin Mosley who shared some of his personal life with us a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one thing you know. Wrestling is to me because I've been a part of SCW as a ring announcer 10, 10 or so years ago. I'm a fan. We've got this podcast. Wrestling is just one big family. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that we can all be here for each other. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and wrestling know. is wrestling is cathartic too. Like you said, mm -hmm. you, you, some people seek it out uh, to, 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 to get away from the normal everyday bump, bumps and grinds of life or wh whatever's mm -hmm. going on. I want to thank you for sharing your story. I also want to selfishly uh, say I'm so glad you're back. You're definitely one of the highlights of the show for me. I love coming out and seeing what Rip Studwell is going to do that night. So I'm thank glad you. that you were able to uh, to get yourself back to where you needed it to be, to be back mm -hmm. in front of the crowd, be back in front of the audience. Love having Rip Studwell back out there. Well, thank you. That means a lot to me. Yeah, I wanted to circle back to that point you brought up, Chris, um, where – sharing the story does help. And I think that was one thing I had to realize too. Like I kept a lot of stuff in and it's like, well, it, there's a, there's a usefulness for, for me to let it out at the end of the day. So I'm hoping it can help other people because during that time, you know, I read stories about baseball players who were dealing with anxiety and stuff too. Daniel Bard was the big one. He's the Rockies closer last I checked. And yeah, it was just, it was nice to see that like I can stop. Right. And I can, I can come back whenever I'm ready, you know, and the response was great to it as well. Like when, cause I, I closed off. I didn't really say why I was leaving too much. I gave kind of a vague answer to a lot of people, but then when, you know, people started realizing, you know, there were a lot of people that were very kind to me, very helpful. Um, Merrick Brave, Johnny Wisdom, uh, Chris Angle, the one referee. Um, there were just so many people that, you know, it, it was uh, overwhelming in a good way, right? Like I just didn't expect it because you know, try as we may, I feel like mental health, while we've taken a lot of good steps, I just still don't feel like it's really there where we need it to be. And like, I feel like a lot right. of men specifically keep it in because it's just, it's not something that's talked about, you know, you just right. have to kind of work through it. You have to just keep going and then one day it'll get better. And it's just like, that's just not how it works. Unfortunately, you have to confront it. You have to stop. And I'm thankful that I did because now I'm in a much better place. So. I, I appreciate you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I appreciate you guys letting me talk about it on here. No, it's no, we're so glad. We're so glad you did because you know you're right. Mental health does have a stigma around it. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. If it's men's, and mm -hmm. uh, we should not shy away from those conversations. We should have those conversations because the person that maybe is having that conversation isn't necessarily a person. Maybe someone else is needing to hear that. Uh, yeah, that one person's needing to get it out, but there's somebody out there that needs to hear that as well mm -hmm. and it's reassuring. And uh, we need to do what we can uh, as men, you know, talking mm -hmm. about, you know, as mature men talking about this to erase yeah. that stigma um, yeah, because yeah. everybody's dealing with something one way or another. And absolutely. And what they're dealing with and how they're dealing with it may be able to help you get out of how you're dealing with what your situation. So, yeah, we got to erase that stigma for sure. I agree 100 percent. Well, gentlemen, we're going to, I think that's a good note to take a quick pause on, do some uh, pay some business dues, uh, take care of a few things. We'll uh, take a quick break. 
We'll come back. We got more to talk about with Rip Studwell. We're going to talk about uh, more in depth on his big comeback. Uh, on the other side of the break, we will have our moment of focus. Uh, yeah. But we will be back in just a moment here. All right. Football season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, cards subject to change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune in to Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Pain has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Back by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on Educated Ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For frequency's sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline. Low Pies, New York-style pizza served up by the Slice or Pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles. Sports cards and memorabilia, vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Welcome back, Welcome to, the back show. to the show. <laughs> you are uh, you are tuned in to Current Subject to Change. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoos. We've got Rip Studwell in the studio today. Before we get back to Rip, we do have a little more business to take care of. Just want to briefly talk about the third annual Sandra Lee Memorial Car Show that's coming up on May the 4th this year. Uh this is a charity event. Proceeds go to the Autism Society of the Quad Cities. More importantly, if you are a wrestling fan, you are going to want to be there. Uh, donations of at least $5 are encouraged, but you will get to see the likes of Coco Beware, Cowboy Bob Orton, Fred Ottman, better known as Tugboat, or the Shockmaster if you're a WCW fan. And you're gonna, you can climb aboard the Ho Train... If, I, if you will, to see The Godfather, uh, there are a couple of others. Uh, independent star Luke Graham Jr., the original Glow Girl Hollywood. Uh, like I said, all the proceeds go to the Autism Society of the Quad Cities. They are also selling 12 by 12 posters. There will only be 50 of those. And you can get into a raffle for a Pepsi pedal car for just a dollar. Uh, so... Stop by the Rock Island County Fairgrounds, May the 4th. Uh, this is a great charity event. If you're into cars, if you're into wrestling, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, right now, since we're coming back from break, Nick, uh, Nick Ripped, I think we need to just take a moment to focus. Be back after, after the moment of focus with JT Energy. Welcome to week... Five of a moment of focus with the feline phenom, JT Energy. And this week, I think we should focus on letting go. Because the, the past, it, it can come back to haunt you. It really can. It's always just right over your shoulder. And I think it's fitting that with your guest, Rip Studwell, being involved with someone that haunts your past is something that you need to let go of. You need to find your way to make your past go away and have your future be what's in front of you and be what's important and be what you focus on. 
This has been a moment of focus with the feline phenom, J. T. Energy. JT there with some words of wisdom, a moment of focus, of course, letting go. Ripped, I have no doubt you can let go of the past and, and be able to build on the future, but I believe your current problem you have in SCW Pro right now, James Thomas has got a hard time of letting go of the past. Can you talk about currently what's going on in your run in SCW and uh, what's been going on with you and James Thomas as you guys have had uh, a few face-to-face -face encounters recently? Yeah, so when I came back at the Rumble, um, James Thomas was on top, and I uh, distracted him, and he was uh, thrown over the top rope. So I cost him that opportunity and uh, costed him another one later. Um, and ever since then, you know, I have been uh, barred from the uh, the arena. So a masked man has been coming around and uh, destroying more James Thomas opportunities. So, yeah, and coming up uh, at Wildwood, James Thomas has invited me out to uh, have a discussion about the future because he is – currently losing his mind so that'll be a good time and i'm worried about exactly where that discussion is gonna go because james thomas has been carrying around a mallet the last couple of <laughs> times i've seen him so i hope i hope that doesn't come into play yeah. i hope it is just a discussion but do watch your back with that with, with that hammer that he's uh, he's toting around there i will i will <laughs> uh we're joined by Rip Studwell here on the Card Subject to Change podcast, powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, and colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. And Rip, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about your life a, uh, a little bit away from wrestling and uh, your your love of writing. You're a published author. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about what it was like to get something published and, and your love of writing, and, and I'm sure that still continues to this day. Yeah, it's um, it was really cool when I got published, for sure. I... Um... It was a surreal feeling um, to hold your own work in your hands, yeah, um, and just to feel the pages because I, you know, I've read thousands of books at this point in my life. You know, I've read so much, so it's cool to be able to hold my own work. Um, but yeah, just my my love of writing's always been there. I got into reading really big when the Iron Man movie came out in two thousand eight, if you can believe it, because I wasn't a huge reader. I was I was more of a sports kid, honestly. I played baseball, I played basketball, you know. Uh -huh. uh, but when Iron Man came out, I was like, I have to read some more Iron Man because that was amazing. Like, I just love that story so much. And then I read comic books and then I got more into books. And now I'm reading both. You know, I have a stack of books to my right here uh, that I plan to read here shortly. Um, so, yeah. And writing's always been something that I've enjoyed a lot because um, I didn't get serious about it until I was much older. But I would always write stuff for school. And the teachers were always like, yeah, this is pretty good. Keep it up. And you know, like when you're a kid, I feel like that's another thing I feel like I miss the mark on with a lot of people. Like people don't think it's that big of a deal when kids are told certain things. But you remember so much when you're a kid. I still remember my sixth grade teacher telling me how great my writing was. And if it wasn't for something like that, I probably wouldn't be writing today. So, um, yeah, it's it's really fun writing. I just like taking a crazy concept and just making it about life. Cause a lot of them are, you know, science fiction, but they're, you know, they're rooted in like mental health and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun writing. I actually started a story yesterday that I'm really excited about because I read uh, Descender from Jeff Lemire, which is a graphic novel collection. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or if anybody watching is, I highly recommend it. It was one of the best sci-fi things I've ever read in my life. Um, but yeah, that inspired something that I want to write. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I very much enjoy writing now that I'm getting back into it because I, I was having problems with that too, with the concussion as well. But now that everything's lifted, I'm definitely more excited about that too, which is really cool. Yeah. Are, are there are there similar parallels to your wrestling career and how you express yourself as Rip Studwell and then your writing career and how you express yourself as an, as being an author of what you're trying to write at that time? Is there is there similarities in that? Um. I think it's, yeah, I think it's equal parts of myself. I think it's different. You know, I'm having more fun with wrestling and just feeling the crowd and stuff like that. And writing, it's just a way to like release a lot of the um, 
more complex emotions that are <laughs> much harder to do for professional wrestling because sure. <laughs> I could try to do the concepts that I, I do in my sci-fi books, but I don't think they'd reach uh, because it's just, it would take too much time. I don't want to do a, a 30 minute promo where I'm trying to describe this concept. It's like, we have matches to get to guys. So yeah, it's, you know, it's just difficult <laughs> for myself at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, um, it's definitely expressive and in, in, in both ways um, I'm able to let out, you know, more like frustration and like anger and more of those higher end emotions. And it's more like the lower end emotions on um, writing and stuff like that. So definitely the same, but different in a way. And Nick, Nick brought up earlier that wrestling is cathartic. I, I know from experience, writing can be cathartic as well as mm -hmm. reading. Um, I haven't written anything in probably 10 years, but I used to pretend like I was a writer. <laughs> I, I, I have I have trouble finishing things, so I would lose motivation. Mm -hmm. That's neither here nor there. But uh, so you talked about like sci-fi. Is that is that the genre you'd gravitate towards when you read and when you write? Usually, oh yeah, for sure. I'm a huge fan of science fiction. Uh, Phil K. Dick's one of my favorites. Or no, he's yes. my favorite. Yeah, Ender's, Ga Ender's Game, right? Oh no, that's a uh, Orson, Orson Scott, Scott card. card. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my favorite. That's my favorite oh, series. Yeah. I still, yeah. I actually still got to read that one. I'm still not caught up with Andrew's game, but I have it. I want to read it here shortly. Philip but... K. Dick is a uh, Blade Runner, correct? Yes, that's the yep. one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he did Android's that. Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a mouthful of a title for the book, but it is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that one Ubik is amazing. Uh, a Scanner Darkly is a really good one too. So yes. yeah, like sci-fi is definitely sci-fi and like speculative fiction. Uh, cause speculative fiction is more like, you know, it doesn't have to be like about science. It just has to speculate on, you know, things in life. So like Matt Haig is really good with that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the midnight library at all. Um, he did that one and that's speculative fiction. So it's usually that because I, you know, as much as I like, Science. Oh, Robert A. Heinlein's, at Heinlein's another one, too. I totally forgot about him. Um, but yeah, like the harder sci-fi stuff is just, it's not that fun because, you know, if I wanted to read a science textbook, I'd read a science textbook. So it's like, that's, right. I usually try to get like speculative fiction with these elements into it. So I definitely gravitate towards that because it's, at the end of the day, it's still entertainment, right? You know, I'm not entertained by, you know, science stuff. I mean, it's neat, but like the only one I've been captivated by, by was a uh, Jurassic Park, the Michael Crichton novel. Um, okay. That one is great because I could read about dinosaurs all day. I love dinosaurs. So, but yeah, that's like a very special case, but yeah, I definitely gravitate towards that. It's my favorite. Um, it's either that or I'll read like autobiographies and stuff like baseball biographies are probably my number two because I am a huge baseball fan. So I, I love reading those stories. So Rift, where we're talking about your writing, where can, if we're interested in your work, where can we find you? Where can we pick up copies of what you've written? Well, thank you for bringing that up. It's on uh, Amazon. Um, so if you type in, I have one book, which is a collection of stories called In Worlds Alone. Um, and my writer name is uh, Daniel Drake. So if you type that in, you should be able to find it. You'd probably have to type the whole thing though, since it's, you know, not like a, a hugely popular work. So it's not like you'll find it just by the title or just by my name. So you probably have to type it together, but I have that one. And then I have the final era, uh, which is also on Amazon. So yeah, they're all on there. They're about eight to 10 bucks. Uh, it's been a while since I've checked the prices, but they're around that. So they're affordable, which is what I yeah. try to keep it at because, you know, I'll still make, you know, somewhat of a profit, but that's not really the point for me. I do it because I enjoy it. And, you know, like I'm a big comic book guy too. So like image comics, always did like the first graphic novel was 10 bucks and because of that i found so many good stories so I, I you know i i like that price point so people can pick up my book and it's like oh this is cheap and it's like if i don't like it it's whatever and if i do then you get another great story down the road so you talked and, about you, you know, talked about picking up your book and feeling the pages and being able to flip it in your hands. How cool is it to go to Amazon and and see your work up there? I mean, that's got to be cool. <laughs> yeah, it is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, again, it's just one of those crazy life things that you know you can, you. It's hard for yourself to take stock of your own life, uh, and like how much of a mark you made. But like seeing tangible things like your own work on Amazon is just sure. that's awesome. 
you know, I want to talk about another aspect of your life outside of wrestling. You are a fellow podcaster, if I'm not mistaken. Talk yeah, about yeah. Uh, talk about your podcast a little bit. Yeah, funnily enough, I actually came from it about an hour ago at this point. Well, an hour from 2.30 when we started. So uh, me and uh, Maria, which she's better known as Valentina Loca, she used to wrestle, but she had a uh, pretty bad neck injury. So she had to stop at the end of last year, start of this year, somewhere around that time. Yep. Um, and yeah, we uh, it's called Music Maria and also Drake. Uh, I came up with a title. I was really happy with that one because <laughs> I just like, thank you. Yeah, Cause it's like music and Maria, they both have M's and it's like, it could be a nice alliteration, but then I'm just there. So it's, it's <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, at the, uh, for our part, for our podcast, we just talk about music cause she's a big rap fan. I'm a big heavy metal rock fan. And um, we give each other an album each week and it's a lot of fun because I don't have a lot of people you know, I'll, I feel like it's the same for everybody. We give each other music, but then, you know, life gets in the way, so we don't have time to listen to it. So to be able to, you know, have such a regimented, like, schedule and, like, we'll talk about this one next week makes us have to listen to new things, broaden our horizons, and it's a uh, it's a good time. And it's just fun to be able to hand stuff off that I enjoy so much, albums that I've loved for several, year, several years, and to give it to someone else and to see if they enjoy it as much as I do. So it's, it's a really good time. If people ever get a chance to listen to it. Um, it's definitely just for fun. Yeah, I've I've had a chance. I've it's been a while since I've listened to an episode, but I have tuned in. It's you guys do great work. I'm oh thank you. Uh, I'm I'm excited to to look at, to delve in a little more. Just my podcast regimen is not what it used to be <laughs> since I'm not traveling anymore. That uh, was yeah. uh that was my go to when I was working my previous job. I would be traveling hours away, mm -hmm. multiple days of the week. So. Music and podcasts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what fills the gap for sure. It's it's hard when you're not driving to find time to listen to this stuff because that's what you do. I feel like most adults just listen to stuff when they're driving, so it's hard. We're talking here with Rip Studwell on the Cards Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by, power, or the, by the fan for the fan, powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. We're going to jump back into the squared circle here with Riff Studwell. And you talked about how WrestleMania X7 was big for you, uh, you know, got you hooked. What currently are you watching? What do you watch? Do you, do you watch, you know, episodic weekly wrestling? Or what do you watch? Or what what do you go out of your way to watch? Or what what has your interest in, in the, current, uh, the current era, current storylines and stuff? So I try to watch when I can. But as we mentioned, you know, we're busy as adults and, you know, I have so many other things going on right now. So it's kind of hard for me to sit down and watch the weekly episodes. But I, I do my best to sit down and watch the um, the pay-per-views every month. I'm definitely just the WWE guy. I've tried AEW so many times. It's just it's not for me at the end of the day. Like that's it's just it's super technical and it's just a lot of moves and stuff and that's just not what i get into personally speaking for wrestling so more power to everybody else who enjoys it but yeah so i'm definitely just a wwe guy but i mean right now we talked about it already but the best thing going is the judgment day with dominic mysterio i would go to bat against anybody about that they're just they're doing everything right in terms of wrestling and storytelling and I mean, I just watched the Elimination Chamber like the day after because it was in Australia, so I wasn't staying up that late. Sure. Um, but I watched it the day after, and that match that uh, Finn Balor and Priest had against uh, well, I don't remember their new tag name, but it's Tyler. It was Bate. Uh, it was Tyler Bate and uh, Pete Dunn. Yeah, New was Catch the Republic. Republic. The New Catch the Republic. New Catch Republic. New Catch Republic. Yeah. So I watched that match and I was blown away. That was my favorite match of the whole card. And I'm sure a lot of people would say it was one of the chambers, but I'm like, no, I, I, oh, I love, love tag match too. Yeah, and I'm a huge tag wrestling fan too, so that helps out a little bit. Yes. But yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just they're doing everything so well in that ring. Um, Gunther's great. I love watching Gunther. He is a throwback. He is just. He's so believable, and that's the thing you try to get in professional wrestling's believability. And you know, I feel like as cool as a lot of the pretty moves look, they don't look believable or authentic a lot of times. And it's you know, you right. get a guy like Gunther in there, or a guy like Sheamus, and they're just absolutely pulverizing each other. And I'm like, yeah, this is this is a blast. I'm enjoying it a lot. So yeah, there's there's still some great stuff. Oh, Jay Uso is great. I love Jay Uso so much right now. He's one of my favorites. I'm super excited because, you know, on the personal end of things, being able to wrestle your brother at WrestleMania, 
Wow. I mean, that's got to be the coolest thing ever, right? Like, oh, I'm, for sure. Yeah, like I'm so excited for that match. I think it's going to be maybe the best match of WrestleMania weekend, which is probably a hot take, but I'll, I'll stand on that hill because I'm excited for the Rock stuff too. But man, Jimmy and Jay have been my absolute. I mean, they've been my favorite tag team for a while, and just to see them at this moment. And then what it was last year, the WrestleMania before, they main evented with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens too. Amazing match. Uh, yeah, again, just for like a tag wrestling guy like me and you, uh, yep. to see that match in the main event, it's like that's just so cool. I love it. You stole my. You, the, he stole oh, my questions. Ahead. I was going to ask what he was most excited for. It's WrestleMania season. What are you yep. most excited for? But you, you, you answered it with the Jimmy and Jay Uso match. I think. Yeah. I think a lot of people are excited oh, to see yeah. what we're going to do. So good. This is shaping up to be one of the best WrestleManias ever. I think there's a lot By of good stuff. On. Yeah. Because I mean that tag match on night one with The Rock and Roman versus so much, so much yeah. is going to happen in that match. I mean, yeah. worlds are colliding. There's so right. much going on. It, it's going to yeah. be great. Yeah, and that goes back to the one point that I brought up about like storytelling and why it's so important. And you know, if that was just a tag match, I wouldn't really care. But there's so many threads going into that match, and it's just it's gonna ah, oh, it's gonna be so good. I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Can Can I just say that WWE has been on fire in my opinion since right around WrestleMania 38 and yes. moving into today. I mean, Cody's return, the build up to 39, and all all I, just everything. I would, that even, done. I would even step on your toes and say Royal Rumble of last year. Do you remember the whole Sammy and Roman thing? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. that was Royal Rumble last year. I thought they yeah. were on fire. So they've, I mean, it's been a, close to two years that they've been really plugging away and just mm -hmm. pumping out great stuff. Yeah. So, Ripped, I want to, before we uh, before we get you off the hook, I want to play a little fantasy booking with you. Okay. Uh, my first question, whenever we, we play fantasy booking, if there is any wrestler that you could step in the ring with past or present dead or alive who's well obviously not stepping in the ring while they're dead but <laughs> uh past or present who would you want to face in the ring well that's a good question um i think it would probably be edge i think it would be He's, he was probably my favorite for the longest uh, he's still one of my favorites. I, I love watching him wrestle. Um, and just on like a personal note, um, he comes out to Alter Bridge, which, which is my favorite band of all time. Awesome. I knew I knew about them before he took the theme on Metalingus. So it was just a really cool moment when he came out with it one week on Raw. I was like, this is great. Like it just made me fall in love with his character and his work even more. So yeah, I've oftentimes like wanted to come out to alter bridge myself and he also comes out to alter bridge and stuff like that it would just be really cool because i know that was actually that actually did happen finally because uh the judgment day uses the other side from alter bridge when they come out as a group um and what was i think it was clash at the castle it was just really cool to have uh two wrestlers and groups come out to alter bridge i'm like this is just this is heaven they're the best band of all time <laughs> <laughs> Is there a is there a storyline that's happened in wrestling that you would interject yourself into to either improve or just be a part of as a whole? I don't think so. No, um, because I, I've I've seen a lot of great stories, of course, but like they're great stories because of every part that's there, if that makes sense. And like if I'm you know interjected into it, it just I don't think I would do enough to improve it, I guess, um, at the end of the okay, day. That but, makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, I like that answer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ripped, we want to thank you so much for thank spending you. your time. I know you've got family coming into town and, do, and making yeah. making time for us. We're very, we're very appreciative that you're on here. We wanted you a while back, but the what the wait was worth. Uh the, yeah. the wait was worth it to get you on here uh, here yeah. at this time. And we're, we're, we're so happy that you're on here um, and, and we're able to take time out of the show to, or take time out of your day and your busy schedule to be on with us. Oh yeah. It was uh, it was my pleasure. I'm glad you guys waited out and got me on here. Cause yeah, I was, I was wanting to, uh, I'm glad we finally got to, this was a really good time. Um, I don't typically do a lot of podcasts. So this is a, this is a really fun one. I'm glad to have been on. We had a lot of fun talking to you, and by all means, if you ever want to come back, our door is open. 
Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to. We're Rip Studwell fans here. Yeah. Uh, we're unabashedly, uh, we're not going to keep it quiet. We are Rip Studwell fans. Yeah. Here. Well, thank you very much. That means a lot. Yeah. It's very cool. Thank you. Well, Nick, we're going to, that's going to put a bow on this episode, I think, but we got big things coming up. We got, we have five episodes coming up next week. We're going to have Tim Regal on next Sunday, talking all things independent wrestling for WrestleMania weekend. We've got an all-star for frequency sake panel show coming up on Wednesday, building into WrestleMania. Yep. We're going to talk about stand and deliver Saturday afternoon of WrestleMania weekend. We're going to recap night one immediately following night one of WrestleMania. Special late night edition. Gonna, Special late night, late night edition, edition of Parts of Exchange. And then we are talking night two and the raw after WrestleMania the following Tuesday. And that's just that's just the first week in April. We've got so much more on our plate the rest of the month. I'm just going to throw a name that I I could throw three names out there, but I'm going to throw one out as a teaser. Connor Hopkins. Yeah, we've got Connor oh, Hopkins coming oh, up. Uh, <laughs> part of them Dem Coyotes. He's the yeah. briefcase holder for Good as Gold, Dreamwave Wrestling. He will be on here in the future. We're looking forward to it. But first, we've got to get through WrestleMania. If you're a wrestling fan, it's the most wonderful time of the year, and we're all ready for it, I'm sure. Absolutely. I'm excited. I was, I'm was. i excited that we had Rip Studwell on. It was a great talk. For my for Rip Studwell, for my tag team partner, Never Wrong Nick Bull, I am the Wizard CZ. We appreciate you tuning in to Card Subject to Change. Again, we are powered by Lopez, built by Durham Remodeling, and colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. We will see you next week and throughout the week for WrestleMania. You guys have a good rest of your weekend, and thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks for having me.